Hello all, uh, good evening. Uh, this is Santil Kumar. Uh, my talk is about like open WRT of things. Uh, so uh, thanks for giving opportunity for giving a talk. I, I came long way from India to <laughs> present this one. Um, so like the buzzword you all like hear about like Internet of Things, okay? And uh, if you take a 2020, it's expected more than 50 billion devices are connected. Okay, so everywhere like this conference all about like IOT, open IOT, all those things. Okay, so uh, so everyone is wondering like uh, what is this IOT? Is a new buzzword like uh, because people want to tend to be up to date with the technology. Okay, so people are uh, so I'm one of the guy like when I hear the word uh, IOT, I want to explore my hands with that hardware and do stuff. And a lot of big companies like they're building specialized platform for uh, IOT. Uh, they have their own hardware and uh, everyone has their own operating system. Okay, and it's very complicated. If you see outside this hall, there are a lot of company like having a kit, IOT kit. They're saying IOT gateway, all those things. And everyone's saying different, different operating system, but everything is based out of Linux only. But they nicely named it, and they'll say a different variant of it, OK? So as a developer, like uh, the first thing I got is so many things are there in IOT. And uh, there are, every company has the product for IOT, OK? So where I can go and start it? And uh, is it very complicated? Because the company creating the buzzword, such a way that it's very complicated, okay? But I'm an uh, active OpenWRT guy. When I realized that um, uh, where I can start really is uh, what's really IoT. I went and read about it. IoT is all about the connectivity, okay? You are giving a connectivity to a already existing sensors and devices, okay? The previously, the, the device like never talked to each other. Now you are bringing that protocol connectivity, so everywhere is a Wi-Fi is available, so it's possible for this devices to talk to each other, and it can communicate your cloud system and then do processing on that. So if you take a connectivity, the best operating system in the world for a connectivity is like OpenWRT, okay? And if OpenWRT is for a long while, and one of the stable connectivity operating system, where you are like messing with so many operating system, you can go and use it OpenWRT. So that's what my talk about. So as a development platform, like companies are having a different development platforms. Uh, so my thing is like, uh, yeah, I want to learn IoT and I want to bring some sensor data and push it to the cloud and control thing. So where I can start, what is a development platform for me? So I found that development platform in my house. It's like, it's a normal TP-Link router. You can just take it, put it on OpenWRT and make your uh, IOT platform, okay? So you can do magic with that. So that's how I started my IOT implementation, building IOT products. So, so this talk, like, it's all about like, um, uh, how you can use your existing home router as an IOT development platform, and um, how to get access into it, and how to flash OpenWRT on, on it. Then um, the thing is like, uh, how to expand the memory. So if you if you take OpenWRT, OpenWRT will give more options. Like you can in, you can install like n number of software. So this router, which is in the home, it has a memory constraint because it's very cheap device. So it has a memory constraint. So how to expand your device memory? So that's also including my talk. And uh, you can build your personalized uh, cloud IoT gateway in your home, and you can control a bunch of your uh, smart devices in your home. So that's what my talk about. So everywhere is IO IoT. This is a typical home environment. Okay, you have a smart TV, you have a smart refrigerator, and this laptop can communicate to all of these devices. Okay, so this all the device in the existing home, home environment, we have a Wi-Fi router. Okay, so this Wi-Fi router makes sure that this all the devices are connected. So if you're able to hack and uh, make the Wi-Fi router controlled by you, then you're already into that. Okay, can go and uh, make all these small devices communicate to each other. So IoT is all about a connectivity. So it involves a three component basically. It in involves a sensor which runs on some microcontroller which will sense the data as a temperature sensor, pressure sensor, whatever it is. This sensor need to communicate to the node device which is runs on some MIPS based processor or ARM based processor. Okay, which has some teeny operating system to control it. And there is a cloud backend which manages all the sensor, okay, and instruct the sensor to do what the program is written. And um, 
Yeah. So this is a typical uh, TP-Link link router. If you take this router with Arduino and you are get ready for everything. Okay, you can control all the sensors. So that's what this is all about. Okay, there's a typical uh, TP-Link router run by Athero's uh, uh, chipset. And you can connect some Arduino. This is a FDA where you, you will get the serial access of it. Okay. How to expand the memory? So what I did exactly. So uh, I just uh, try to get SSS uh, Like all this TP-Link router, you have an option for firmware upgrade. Okay. And you can get, for this, this is a MR3020 uh, device. You will get OpenWRT firmware for this one. So what I did is like uh, I went to the open WRT trunk and download the firmware and went to the standard TP-Link uh, web-based interface uh, where uh, I just update the firmware. So I got this open WRT on this board. Then I try to get a SSH access. Okay, currently it has a telnet. So it's a, once after you install open WRT, you will get access to the telnet part. Then you can access through the telnet or serial SSH port. Once you get in inside, it's about the Linux box. And you can do OPKG update to get all the software packages. So when I try to install software, then I hit the problem that the memory constraint. OK. And in OpenWRT, they have a feature called ext root, extended file system, where you can make your pen drive as a more uh, memory part. Like So uh, there is a set of commands where you can uh, mount the pen drive. and copy all the root fs into the pen drive. So when I did this part, my storage is increased from uh, 16 MB to around like, this is a pen drive of 8 GB. So it's increased to 8 GB pen drive. And the storage also increased. So it's allow me to build a private cloud network. Like I can store all my uh, music files, documents in that pen drive. Anytime I can access through all my connectivity devices like mobile phone or tablet. So this allows like all this different kind of device communicate. So in my home, like what I did, I just connected the UVC based uh, camera. Okay, so which will give this uh, wireless uh, camera access for that. So it gives unlimited possibility when you have uh, extended your memory storage, and it's up to you to install whatever software you want and up to you like how to make, you want to make this uh, IoT devices. Okay, so what I did, I connected the camera and then I connected like some, I ran that music application also. Uh, so it will act as a wireless music player whenever you enter inside home, based on your mood, it will play some songs, all those things. So uh, there are a lot of hacks available in online where you can just follow the steps to get into this. Uh, there are in hack a day, like you can get more uh, instructable projects where you can do IoT based uh, solution. And I feel like uh, in IoT, um, I don't think so we need any separate operating system for it. Okay, you can get a open WRT based uh, distribution and put all the software application, whatever you want and build your basic IoT application. That's what. So I don't want to drag it. So uh, I hope I'm between your dinner and this talk. So I concluded that. So if you have any question, you can ask. I think I'll take that as no questions. Yeah, Thanks thank very you. much. Thanks so much.